It's a big noisy universe of stocks out there. Welcome to goodbye or goodbye. Our goal to help cut through that noise to navigate the best moves for your portfolio. Today we're taking a look at financial services, which names are best positioned, which are best left behind. I'm here with Max Sykes, Scabelli Funds Portfolio Manager. Thanks so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And you've covered financial services for a long time. So let's get to, first of all, the stock that you like here, and that's interactive brokers. So interesting one, the stock's actually done pretty well over the past years, we can see here. But let's run through your case. Case New client growth. And this is interesting to me because IBKR has been around for a while. Yeah. But we have had some other new brokerages come up, but they're still growing their client base. So this is one of my favorite stocks, an incredible platform led by founder Thomas Petterfee. And they've just built an incredible global moat. And you see it in their client acquisition, which is they've been growing over 20% plus yeah, over the last that. couple of years. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, still pretty good visibility uh, on that client growth. So they're obviously taking share on a global basis. How are they getting those, those new clients in there? So um, they do a lot of advertising. I, I also think they, they get a lot of referrals, too. I think people are very happy with the platform. Um, and then they're also their access to products. So they really have a more sophisticated platform. Uh, and so they're able to take advantage of that in terms of servicing clients. Interesting. Okay, let's get to your next point here. It's the margins on this business, 70% pre-tax margins. Incredible, right? And if you think about a financial services company, much lower in general for the industry. And yet here they are with 70% pre-tax margins. And that's a reflection of their automation, the platform, the efficiency, uh, and the ability to scale. Uh, so what you're getting is an incredible output of, say, a financial uh, technology company, mm -hmm. uh, but you're getting it in a, a financial services company. Interesting. All right. And then finally, there's the valuation here. You think the yeah. P.E. ratio is compelling at these levels. Right. And so you, you added up 20% plus growth, 70% margins, great capital generator, and a trading at 17, 16 times earnings. Mm -hmm. uh, so we think that's very compelling. And uh, just out of curiosity, Interactive, their client base, the folks who are trading on it, how do they differ from other, are they a more professional client base versus more retail? How does that look? So they have a mix of clients. Um, they got started with kind of the self-directed professional traders, more active. And they've evolved to service RIAs, um, introductory uh, broker dealers, mm -hmm. uh, and also um, institutions as well. So gotcha. it's, at this point, it's pretty diversified, 2.7 million accounts. So plenty of room for growth. Uh, plenty of diversification in terms of the potential TAMs for those. So, all right. And, and let's also talk about what could go wrong. We always like to point that out. And if we do see much lower interest rates, which especially after today, it's not looking like it's happening anytime soon. But what would be the effect here? So they've been they've benefited because they have huge balances. They have 460 billion of client equity, and that's in margin loans, credit, etc. Um, and so they benefit from higher rates where they keep short duration securities. To the extent that uh, we do get a lower rate, so let's say, maybe not today as we know, but 25 basis points decline, that would be about 60 million impact to net income. And last year, interest income was about 2.8 billion, so it's about 2% mm -hmm. impact to earnings for a 25% decrease in rates. Uh, but over time, since you grow the balances, even though you might have a little lower rate, you'll eventually make up that income. So you're still on a pretty good growth trajectory, even with the fluctuation of interest rates. Gotcha. And do you hold shares of interest? I do. Yeah, okay. I do. Both gotcha. personally and for our funds. Okay. All right. Let's get to the stock you don't like here. That's Upstart Holdings. This is not as well a known a name, I think we can say, but it's a, a lender that operates online. Um, and first of all, it's not a profitable one. Right. And and at Cabelli, you know, one of our big uh, folks is in terms of our research is we, we look for cash generative businesses. And this is a company, innovative platform, mobile application, very smart people running it. Uh, but at this point, they're still not profitable. And what are some of the headwinds that you referred to as well? So they do personal lending, auto lending, and we've, you know, we've had this incredible credit tailwind and we're normalizing now. So as we come out of that, you know, there's the potential for more write-offs, bad loans, et cetera. So gotcha. it'll be interesting to sort of see how it comes out of the, yeah. the cycle. And then uh, also a lumpy revenue. What, what is causing that lumpiness in the revenue outlook? So um, demand for their, their loans on their platform and how they're sourcing it. Um, so a year ago, uh, no, uh, sequentially they did about 4% increase in loans, mm -hmm. but year over year was a 4% decrease. Uh, and so that, you know they're testing the model. Obviously, they want to make sure they take on the right loans, et cetera. Uh, and so there's a little more lumpiness to it, gotcha. uh, so less visibility. 
And then finally, we've seen some insider selling. We have a chart of this actually where we look at, here we go. So this is the insider buying over the past three months versus selling. And then over the past 12 months, it's a little more notable that there's been a lot more selling. What's going on there? Well, um, first of all, th there's some option exercises that sort of look, you know, mask kind of this buying. but. Mm -hmm you can see that there's been some selling and, and, and consistency over the last 12 months. And there's a number of reasons for people to sell, I mean, uh, to realize income, et cetera. Uh, but generally, when you have this degree of selling, it, it's, it's not a confidence builder for investors like me looking uh, to, to be interested in the business model. So just like we talked about the um, you know, risk to the upside for interactive brokers, the risk to your downside case here is that the firm evolves that business model, maybe gets some more stability in that revenue. Right, so they're, they're rapidly growing. They've taken some share in terms of personal lending, autos, et cetera. Um, so to the extent that they can evolve the model into a much more profitable entity uh, and, and scale it up, then I think that would be of interest to us. But so far, we're, you know, we're a work in progress. And again, we have a discipline of being in those cash-rich general right. businesses. Gotcha. And do you have any position one way or the other in Upstart? No. OK. All right, thanks so much. So let's summarize what you're telling people here. Buy interactive brokers for steady growth, solid margins, compelling price to earnings ratio, avoid Upstart, at least for now, for potential because of potential revenue headwinds and that revenue outlook, also insider selling activity. Thanks so much, Mac. Appreciate you being here. Thank you, Julie. And thank you for watching Goodbye or Goodbye. We'll be bringing you new episodes three times a week at 3.30 p.m. Eastern.